Good afternoon. Welcome to our Emmy chat with uh, at the LATimes.com. And we're talking today with a man that I'm glad to say is very much alive, very well, and looking great is Michael Cutlitz of The Walking Dead and Southland and so many other things. Welcome. Thank so you. good to see you. You Thanks look really good. Here. Thank you. Very different hair. Very different. Very <laughs> different. A lot of people don't know that the, the red was for uh, Scott Gimple when he introduced these characters into the TV show, one of the characters to represent uh, much closer to the comic than they had been. And the, the color cover of the comic, Abraham has this sort of bright orange uh, Scooby-Doo uh, Thelma hair. So was that your hair or a wig? Or no, it was my hair, but they, yeah. they dyed it. They, Boy, they, very, very different. Very dyed it. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. So it's good, so good to see you. I want to jump right into it. Sure. Um, go back at the time capsule a couple of seasons ago. We had a cliffhanger where Rick and the group were lined up in a very forbidding dark clearing. And... Uh, they were confronted by a very bad guy, Negan, with a baseball bat. He's just misunderstood. <laughs> Wrapped in barbed wire, and he said he's going to take his vengeance out on one of you. Mm -hmm. We see him play this game of eeny, meeny, miny, mo, And then he picks one person who we don't see. And we hear the screen goes black, and we hear... Uh, the rather brutal, disgusting sounds of someone's getting skull getting bashed in. And Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we have to wait it's months. The funniest episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> we have to wait months later to find out who it, it is. The fans mm -hmm. are in agony, yep. and it turns out that it's you, Sergeant Abraham Ford. Yes. Um, first of all. What is harder, getting killed or having to keep the secret that you've been? Um, the getting killed wasn't bad. Uh, you know, I, I was a fan of the show before I came on to the show, uh, and I had seen my favorite characters on the show get killed off. So I, I sort of, I, I've been taking the hard line of if you've come on as a, the show as an actor from third season on, and you are surprised when you're told you're going to die, you're a moron, because that's what they do on the show. You, you come there to die, you know? Uh, for me, I, I knew, having known the graphic novels, having known the lifespan of Abraham on the, uh, in the graphic novels, knew that my life in the graphic novels had, you know, comparatively come to an end. I, I knew I was close to where my character passed in the novel, so I was not surprised when I got the phone call. Um, so was it a phone call? It, it was a phone call. It was a phone call that there was going to be a meeting next week, and I hadn't had a meeting with Scott in that way ever so I called him and I said uh, you know I'm, I'm up here visiting my son in San Jose what like what's the meeting about are you killing me he's like well I want to I want to have a, a meeting he's like, are, just let me know if you're killing me so I get, <laughs> so, well yes we think I said okay well what does that mean he's like well we're, we, we think we are but we're not sure when and let's discuss it I said okay I just wanted to know if you if if, if that's what we were talking about um, so I can process it and not, not wonder about it because it has to do with me. It had to do with logistics of, you know, my apartment and living there and being in Atlanta versus being in L.A. So it's, it's not just, you know, you're going to be in the episode or you're not going to be in the episode. It's, there's a whole life change that sure. happens with that. Um, so mine was a phone call and we, we talked about it and he was very appreciative that, um, that I was understanding about it. But I, I knew. I mean, I knew it was time. So even though you knew, is, does the reality of it just sort of um, take it to another level? Uh, look, it's always sad to, to leave uh, a place where you're working, where the working conditions are fantastic. The stories were great. The people were great. Um, so it wasn't sort of like, yeah, I'm leaving. Great. It was sort of like, oh, okay, I understand that. I processed that. And I've, I've, I've been killed from shows before. Um, you know, but the, leaving, the actual leaving of that group, um, you know, sure, it was sad, you know. And you were very well established as one of the, I mean, your character was just, just a lightning, everyone loved Yeah, the, the fans were very, very welcoming and very loving. 
to Abraham, and and I, I we feel that you know every every week and when we travel, and you know it, it was it was nice to be you know included uh, that much and and that quickly uh, by the fan base. What what was the what was the the most best part for you in 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 playing that character? What did you enjoy most? Um, Honestly, the, the 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 fan reactions afterwards, um, seeing how what I was doing because it was, it was definitely something way over the top. You know, I think that, and I think that we have. We were talking earlier about you know Fear of the Walking Dead. I think one of the things that our show has is that we almost have a permission slip so far as our reality to make things a little bit bigger because we are based on the graphic novel, and you have these characters that you know Abraham with the mustache and the, you know the sort of the ridiculous sort of way he presents himself, you know, and I don't mean in a bad way, ridiculous is fine. <laughs> you know, you have Michonne with the sword and Daryl with the crossbow, you know, highly, highly ineffective weapon. Absolutely. You know, we have crossbow, <laughs> we have fire, shot, weapon, you know, reload, back. There's a lot of moving parts to that. Um, you know, Therese with the hammer, this and that, you know, like if one of our characters was to show up in, in, in the other world, they, they wouldn't mesh because fear is, is based much more in... Um, a realistic reality, where ours, right. I believe, is a heightened reality because of the graphic novel. You know, so for me, like the, the the fan reaction to what we're doing, the fan acceptance of what we're doing, was the the most um, the most fun. I've been doing. I've been very fortunate. I've been doing this a long time, and this is the first time that that you really felt something come back. Mm. You know, from the fans when you had done something the week before. So let's go to that night when you're filming that scene. Mm -hmm. And from what I've understood, that it was it was a grueling experience. It it was. It was. Um, you know, we, we always talk about the heat in Atlanta, um, but what we don't always talk about is near the end of our season. We we finish up our season uh, approximately November twentieth, the twenty first. As we get into the end of October and into November, it starts to get really, really cold in the mornings, in the evenings in, in Atlanta um, and in Georgia in general. Um, and so when we're doing that, we were in you know, mid to late November at night on our knees. It was freezing cold and there were multiple takes of, with multiple cameras and we were pretty much in that semicircle on our knees probably for a, a good three and a half, four hours straight, oh, if you wow. were to sort of put it all together over the course of the 12 hour night. It was a good, good three and a half, four hours where you're on your knees. Um, and if anyone, you know, you're in that position and I, I chose to be in a, an upright position on my knees, which is, I, I regret it at the, at the, you know, probably <laughs> f 30 minutes into it, <laughs> but um, was happy with the end result. But it, it was, um, it was it was physically very taxing. And your performance during that scene, I mean, it was it was very strong, which which made it was amazing. It was it was, it was amazing, it, which made what happened even more devastating for all of us. No, but, it was it was it was uh, it was an interesting night. Um, I had always, when I'd read the script, I'd always, being a fan of the show, I wanted to make sure that my death didn't take away from Stephen's death. I was very concerned about that as a fan of the show. Um, you know, we get a lot of people say, oh, you know, Abraham died too. And I'm kind of happy that, uh, that a majority of the focus leaned on Glenn's death, Stephen, Stephen Young's death. Um, because I feel like he, Abraham had come, become part of the fabric of the show and become, you know, important to the show. But I, f I felt that Stephen and Glenn made the show. I watched him grow up as an actor. Uh, Stephen and Melissa McBride, uh, two favorite uh, actors and characters on the show when I was watching it before I entered the show. Uh, and then I, when I got on the show, obviously uh, opened up to a bunch of the other cast and, you know, all a really, really talented group of people. But those two characters in particular, I felt had the, the greatest arcs that I enjoyed following most and felt like they were sort of the, the heart and soul of the show you know, so far as the, the direction of the, um, the moral compass, if you will, um, always pulling everybody back, especially after Herschel had passed. Um, so th that night, you know, saying goodbye to everybody through our work was, um, was 
sort of double-edged, you know, making sure that it was all done properly, but also really making sure that, that and, and hoping that they were paying the, the proper uh, homage to, to the Glenn character. And of course, seeing you, seeing what happened to you was even more traumatizing for us because you had had this great bonding scene with Sasha. Played yeah, by don't Shane. ever get happy. Don't, don't ever, ever so, get happy on The so Walking that's Dead. The <laughs> I can give any advice to any of the characters there. Just always, always stay miserable. And you, you have a long, long life on the show. Don't get happy. Don't be hopeful. Don't have like your plan set for the future. Just be miserable. Wallow in it. Skate it out. So, in in filming that scene, um, you're struck in the head with this bat, and you're you're so strong, uh, you don't go down. Um, which was very, you know, it just said everything there was to know about that character, that his strength was he took it, there was no, there was no whining, there was no, I mean, he was, he just faced his fate bravely. Um, so the process of your just performance during that, what was, what was that like? Um, you know what, it, it was all written. You know, not to not to take anything away from what we do, but you know, all of that stuff was written in there. There were some I did present myself. I chose that Abraham would really sort of present himself to to Negan, um, but I felt that that's that was him being a soldier. That was him sort of finally being able to. He look. He knew. He had assessed this whole situation. He knew someone in the group had to go, and him sort of being the ultimate soldier was going to take it for the next guy. Um, he was willing to give his life for the group uh, and willing to give it. Uh, you know, I mean that very strongly. He was, he knew someone was going to go and he hoped and and he, he really wished that it was him. And I think that fr from the flip side of it, uh, Negan sees that he is one of the strongest uh, physically, at least from a, from a size standpoint. Um, and I think that, you know, and he kind of tips his hand that he almost thinks that I'm Rick's right hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am the one who he's going to make an example of, of you know, and, and I'm okay with that. And, and there's a line which we can't say on, um, on live Facebook. <laughs> but you know, there's there was a very definitive line which mm -hmm. which really sort of encapsulates what your character stands for. Did you when you watched that episode, when you watched yourself actually uh, being dispatched, what was what was your what was your reaction to seeing what it's, what happened to you? It's hard to separate all the technical stuff because there's a lot of prosthetics that go, that are involved with that night where. You know, myself and Steven were, you know, we'd shoot one, one baseball bat hit and then they'd take us out and change us, you know, into a different prosthetic piece. And what, there's a lot of moving parts to that. Um, up until the actual hit, though, everything is pretty seamless. Um, y Repeat your question. What was it like watching yourself get killed? All right. It was not a big deal. It was, it's, it's horrible for us. Of course it is, but we, we're, we're literally, that for us, that moment is broken down into, you know, two nights of six hours of, you know, each night of prosthetics. Yeah. So we're look, we, for us, it's a very technical thing. So we're looking to see if that technically looks good as opposed to, oh my gosh, that's horrible. Now, when I saw Steven, uh, you know, Glenn, the Glenn character get beaten for me was horrific. Like I said, it was one of my favorite characters. So from my, I think from an acting standpoint, you look at it and you, you know, you know how the audience is going to react, but you, you don't react the same way because you are so much a part of it. Hmm. It's interesting. There are lots of people who um, <clears throat> have questions for you, so I wanted to, uh, a lot of Walking Dead and non-Walking Dead. Um, there's one fan who's asking, was it hard playing the guy Brenda Walsh was not interested in whatsoever You know, in 210? I don't think I like your attitude, buddy. 
I think Brenda was very interested in Tony. You have no idea what happened in between. So I'm just going to leave it at that. It's all right. Next question. Uh, Natalie wants to know if there's any chance of a Southland movie. Oh, we hope so. Um, everybody is involved who, who was involved with it is, is interested in doing that. Yeah. Um, Southland, by the way, is, is you know, this, this really revolutionary police show um, that you were such an important it, part of. It was, Southland was amazing. We, we got to sort of reinvent how uh, stories are told on television. I mean, I mean, I don't, that sounds like a huge claim, uh, but we did. It was um, guerrilla and, filming. And it didn't always work. Um, and then we, we, we would build on things when it didn't work, but, but when it worked, it was, it was amazing. And I, I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of that and the, the cast that we, we had, Ben McKenzie, Regina King, Sean Hattesey. Um, and then when we, were, when we were over at NBC, you know, uh, another, the cast was probably twice as big, Kevin Alejandro, Michael McGrady, uh, Aria. I mean, it was just it, the people that were involved in it, Chris Chulak, Ann Bitterman, you know, I mean, it was, it was, you know, John Wells had t told us when we were when we were first doing the pilot, he says, you know, I don't want you to look at this as a, as a linear narrative. I want you to look at this as sort of a composition, uh, a piece of music. So a bunch of things are going to happen during this composition, and it's not necessarily going to be narrative or linear, but by the end of it, you're going to feel an emotional uh, sort of catharsis, and that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily trying to solve a case every week because that's not what happens. Right. But we are trying to make you feel something every week. And um, I, I couldn't be more proud to be part of that. And we do hope uh, that we can do something like they do with Sherlock, you know, do one or two here and there every, you know, couple of years when we're all available. I, th I think the amazing. audience would love it. That would yeah. be amazing. Um, how does, uh, there's another fan who wants to know, how does Abraham... I guess, feel about Eugene being a savior? I don't, I don't, I've been asked this before. I, I don't think <laughs> this would surprise Abraham at all. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I think he might bash him in the face again, but ultimately, <laughs> you know, like, and I've said this before, there, there'll be two things left at the end of the zombie apocalypse, cockroaches and Eugene. Really? He's so a he's, survivor. He's, 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 he's doing exactly what Eugene has done from day one. So there, there is no... No surprise. That doesn't mean he's not going to grow. That doesn't mean that he might not surprise us. Um, but I don't think that he, at this point, has done anything that, that, is, that is out of character uh, at all. At all. You two had great chemistry, by yeah, the way. Yeah, Josh is, Josh is fantastic to work with. Um, a few fans want to know if you kept anything from the set, and if you didn't, what would you want to have? If I kept things, that would be stealing. <laughs> and we don't steal anything. We wouldn't, we wouldn't steal a jacket that had fur around the collar. We wouldn't, we wouldn't <laughs> steal a knife or any cigars or nothing. We would not do that. That would be wrong, and we would not do it. Good to know. You're yes. law-abiding. Stay in school. <laughs> Marsha wants to know, if you met Nagin, how would you react as opposed to how Abraham reacted? If I met Negan, not if I met Jeffrey. Yeah. If I met Negan. I would have been dead a long time ago in the zombie apocalypse. I, I, I wouldn't have met Negan. Yeah, I don't know. You don't think you would have done well in, in zombie no. apocalypse? No. No. Maybe. But No. When everyone's sort of like, yeah, I would have done this. I just probably would have rolled over and died. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's not gonna ever happen. Come on. How would you like The Walking Dead to end? I don't. I I used to guess things, and I stopped doing that because I realized that we're asked that question not incredibly often, but and often enough that over the years, that with each of us being asked it one of us might come up with the actual ending, and I, don't, I would hate for that to be out there. I, just, I, you know, I, I know that Robert has an ending for it. Um, he, he knows in his, in his mind how it's gonna end. I don't know if specifically, specifically, but he knows what the ending is, and um, 
much like the people you know who who spoil things on the internet that I don't like, um, I'm just going to suggest that we all watch and see. Oh, what did say? Because television is not a democracy. To 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 be part of both Southland and The Walking Dead, two iconic shows. I mean, that's yeah, that's got to be just really gratifying. I'm it? really fortunate. You know, I I I I. I yeah, I've been, you know, and Band of Brothers on top of that. I'm, I'm, I sometimes look back at the things I've done and I'm, I'm sort of overwhelmed uh, because I have been given a lot of really wonderful opportunities and, and been able to work with a lot of really amazing people over the years. Um, you know, we don't, you don't choose things when you go into them because you think, oh, that's going to be, you know, an iconic show or that's going to have, you know, this kind of impact. You choose things because there's stories if you have a choice. You choose things because they have stories that impact you personally. And it, it's nice to know that, that you know, my taste is in alignment with what people want to see. You know, so it, it's, it's cool. And with The Walking Dead, you didn't totally say goodbye because we saw you in the, I know. In the finale. I know, in it was a, crazy. What was that like? That was kind of awesome, going back, being able to go back home. You know, that was that kind of a feeling, you know, uh, the uh, the scenes with myself and uh, Sonequa, um, it was basically a, a 12 or 13 page scene that they broke up over the course of the episode. So we, when we shot it, we, we squished it all in together and made it one continuous scene from beginning to end. And because it, it is broken up the way it is, the transitions weren't always really smooth. So. Greg Nicotero let us play through all that and, and make those transitions. So ultimately, it, it wound up being like a, a 15 minute or 16 minute take for each take of the scene. But we got to play with that and find cool things in the relationship, um, some of which stayed in because they, they found other things within the scene as, as we did. Uh, and they used it when they edited. Um, but it was nice. It was nice to go back and and and. and feel that family again and, and be welcomed back and to be able to work with everybody one more time. How does how do you develop chemistry with with someone who's going to play your your lover on a show that you don't really have that kind uh, well, of relationship with? Well it's, it's, come on dude, look at this. <laughs> how do you Well, okay. Well, I'm sorry, that was a really stupid question. I thank you for saying okay, it. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, no. I apologize. No, you know, like chem chemistry <laughs> just happens. You know, it's it's. I, th I think you can open yourself up to to experiencing new things and new people. And as an actor, I think if if you're open, you you can have chemistry with almost anybody. Um, I've been again fortunate. You know, over the years, the last the last couple of projects, I've had amazing respect and amazing chemistry with with my partners you know when I was working with with Ben McKenzie when we started working um, we come from very different different places and had come from very different places in our career uh, and when we started working together there was an immediate an immediate chemistry between us um, and I think that was because of our willingness to be open with each other uh, and not sort of either one of us take control or, or or think the other one knows better, but you look you look for the answers in the other person, and I think that's with 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 all actors, you know. Um, I, I think that's where it comes from, mm. is a willingness to trust the other person, uh, and be open, and let not only the 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 other actor in, but that also lets the audience in. Uh, and I think that when it's when it's really there, they the audience feels like they're sharing something and or watching something almost that they shouldn't be seeing. So, it's um it's one of those intangible things that, that when it happens, you, you know. You guys had real uh, electricity. She's amazing um, as well. Um, just amazing. Um, since you reappeared in the finale, do you think it, there might be some more uh, flashbacks for you? That I don't know because I, um, I only found out about going back for the finale about two and a half weeks before I went back. You know, it was never in, in the plan that I knew. You mm -hmm. know, Scott and, and uh, uh, Robert Kirkman keep that stuff pretty pretty close to the pretty vest. Close to the vest. Um, you know, and and there was a possibility that I wasn't even available. You know, so right. it's like you, you know they they had a lot of balls up in the air. Yeah. Um, but certainly it could happen with any of the characters. You know, they they've well established that that is one of their ways of telling stories. 
Um, there's a tremendous amount of history that we don't know anything about. We really don't know, uh, you know, the, the real backstory with what happened with the group between Abraham, Eugene, Abraham, Rosita. Mm -hmm. um, they could certainly go back there. They could certainly go use Eugene as a catalyst to, to go back to what he's learned or what he was told. They could go back to conversations. Um, they can go back with Maggie to, to Glenn to see stuff that we haven't seen. Any of these characters that have left the show can certainly come back from a, from a storytelling standpoint. Um, I and mean, we're not we're not told. Uh, you're not told you know, until so. until, it, until it happens. So you're all in the dark. Exactly. Um, I don't know what this means. Will you continue to do <laughs> Walker Stalker cons? Oh, the conventions. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I, that's I what continue. that means. I will okay. continue. That that's one of the one of the sort of amazing byproducts of all of this is is meeting the fans, mm -hmm. um, especially the families and the little kids. Uh, it's just uh, it is something I never never even dreamed of, and it's amazing. Is it surprising you that the the Walking Dead sort of a family show? I mean, yeah. Well, people are like every <laughs> Sunday we get together. The whole you know, I, we used to be us like Mutual of Omaha and then Disney. You know, now I'm really dating myself. But now it's like, yeah, we get together for the Walking Dead. And you're like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, but it is people. Parents tell us all the time, and that's not an exaggeration. They say it's the only thing that me and my teenage kid connect on. But we connect on that, and we get together every Sunday night. We watch it. A lot of people have viewing parties at home, and they, 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 you know, they all watch it together and talk about it, and then watch the, the Talking Dead afterwards, right. you know, and discuss, you know, the show and and all things related to it. And uh, it's great. I mean, I think it's great if it if it pulls them together and have some talking about things. Hey, whatever works. Yeah, exactly. Whatever works. Uh, got a little lightning round, too, that we wanted to All right. put you through. Boxers, Breeze, no. Um, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> what was the last show you binge watched? Um, in the process of sort of, I had to stop because my wife was out of town, but we were binging uh, Taboo. Actually, I finished Taboo. Sorry, babe. Oh. <laughs> out there now. Is this your way of telling her that you? It is. Just how it is. She's ahead of me on uh, on uh, Handmaid's Tale, though. So, okay. And I was going to wait for her, and she's like, oh, no, I watched when you were out of town. So it all so, works out. Yeah, sort of. I'll watch again. Okay. Um, what show that you love would you want to sit and watch someone else enjoy for the first time? What show do I watch would I like to watch someone else enjoy for the first time? Uh, hmm. Game of Thrones. Hmm. Okay. Could be a bunch of things. I'm just throwing out Game of Thrones. Um, if you could go back and be on any classic show, what would it be? Smash. Ooh. Got a who from him. I got a grunt from somebody behind the curtain you can't even see. <laughs> got, they're all back there watching Jeff Sessions. It's crazy. Um, why MASH? Because it's probably still one of the best TV shows, if not the best TV show ever on TV. Wow. So. Um, what genre would you like to try? Rom-com, musical, sci-fi, costume? Definitely not musical, although that would be funny. Uh, sci-fi. I want to be. In, I, I would. I do. <coughs> I do uh, a western. Yeah. Sci-fi. Maybe do a western in space. That'd be cool. What does that mean? That'd be cool. Uh, Walter White or Tony Soprano? Walter White. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I couldn't. No, no hesitation. There. No hesitation there. I, ne I, don't, I never understood the. To me, Tony Soprano was like like the uh, the governor. I never really understood how he stayed in power. Wow. So I think Merle's going to kill the governor, like in real <laughs> life. You know, I was like, all these dudes would take him out. Tony Soprano the same way. It's just, very cool. That's just me. Well, I can't, uh, I can't thank you enough. It was good to see you looking so handsome. And, and alive. Good. And alive. That's the most important thing. Thank you so much, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And for this and uh, more chats with our Emmy folks, please tune in to latimes.com. Thank you very much.